Okay, now that we have defined the key efficiency and performance parameters for a jet engine, let's look at a bit more thermodynamics and look at ideal psychoanalysis for aircraft gas turbine engines. And a gas turbine engine is just an engine that uses highly, uh, rapidly spinning machinery to either um, do work on or extract work from a fluid. The cycle we're going to use, the work call is the Brayton cycle. So here's our TS diagram. Here's a low constant pressure line and a high constant pressure line. And our ideal cycle looks something like this. With some heat transfer acute in. So there's three processes here. Reversible adiabatic compression, constant pressure heat addition, and reversible adiabatic expansion. In this course, we'll only concern ourselves with the ideal case, where the compressor, turbine, and nozzle expansion are isentropic. Now, the ideal cycle analysis deals with the engine's thermodynamics only, and doesn't worry about how the engine accomplishes the thermodynamic processes. We'll get to that soon. So let's consider a simple turbojet engine, which is the simplest kind of jet engine. And we can model this directly with the ideal Brayton cycle. So let's look again at what happens. We take in air. Compress it, add fuel, and burn it. This is the process, mod the modeling process is heat addition. We expand in the turbine to power the compressor. and accelerate the fluid in a nozzle to generate thrust. And if I sketch this out, let's see here. We'll have a compressor here. Combustor. And a turbine. Okay, let's make the nozzle a little more nozzle-esque. Okay, so we have the inlet, we have a compressor, we have the burner or combustor, we have the turbine, and the nozzle. Now I'll do some station numbering. Seven, five, four, 
three, two, one, and then zero or not is out in the free stream. There would be a station six if there was an afterburner in this engine, but we'll not consider that here. So this is the center line, and so this is a axisymmetric cut uh, cut through through the engine. I've drawn various blade rows in the compressor and turbine to show you what they might look like, but we'll think about those in more detail later. Now, typical analysis for an ideal cycle like this, we'll use non-dimensional temperatures and pressures. So recall from our thermodynamics review that the total temperature over the temperature so the stagnation temperature over the temperature is 1 over gamma minus 1 over 2 m squared for an ideal gas, and the pressure is the same formula raised to the gamma over gamma minus 1. So let's make a few definitions now. Tt naught over T naught. So this ratio in the free stream we'll call theta naught. And TTI, so some other station over T naught, will be theta i. So these are exclusively functions of the Mach number. Then we'll do the same thing with pressure and use delta for that. So that delta naught is theta naught to the gamma over gamma minus 1. Typically, we'll work with stagnation pressure and stagnation temperature because, one, they're easier to measure, and two, we don't have to track kinetic energy changes through the engine. We use pi as a symbol for the stagnation pressure ratio. across a component of the engine, and tau as the stagnation temperature ratio across the component. Now these components are various bits of the engine. And they include, we'll have a subscript for each one, D for the diffuser or inlet, C for the compressor, B for the burner or combustor, T for the turbine, and N for the nozzle. Now since all components are ideal, there are no losses, and pi D equals tau D equals 1. So in the inlet, it's isentropic and adiabatic. The compressor temperature ratio is just the compressor pressure ratio, the gamma minus 1 over gamma. The pressure ratio in the burner is 1. Turbine temperature ratio is the turbine pressure ratio, to the gamma minus 1 over gamma. And the nozzle is also isentropic and adiabatic. Now, remember we're doing a thermodynamic analysis here, so we're going to use C for velocity, so that we don't uh, mix it up with the property-specific volume V. So the approach we're going to take is to get the thrust, by getting the nozzle exit velocity C7 over the free stream velocity C0 
And we're going to do this as a function of the cycle parameters. To do this, we'll use a power balance, so the first law. To relate the compressor and turbine parameters. And then we'll use energy analysis of the burner to relate heat addition to the fuel flow rate. And its energy content. Okay. So, start a new page. For the thrust, F is M dot A for air, one plus F which is the fuel flow rate fraction. I'll define that in a moment. Heat 7 minus P naught A7. So this is just applying our station definitions to our general thrust formula. But F is M dot fuel over M dot air. So M dot F over M dot A. And this is typically much smaller than 1 usually on the order of 3%, perhaps. So then we can say that m dot is approximately m dot a, which is also approximately m dot a, plus m dot f, and p7 equals p naught if the Mach number at 7 is subsonic. So then, F is approximately m dot c7 minus c0, which is the same simplified expression we had before. So writing this non-dimensionally, m dot a0. Now here now we're going to put the speed of sound in the free stream. Then we can put the Mach number m0 here and C7 over C0 minus 1. So A0 is the square root of gamma R T0, so the speed of sound. And M0 is the Mach number at station 0 far upstream. The specific impulse there is I over M dot F G. So we can write that as F over M dot times F, our fuel flow rate fraction, times G. Now we need to figure out what C7 over C0 is. Well, this is M7 over M0 times the square root of gamma R T7 over gamma R T0. And if we neglect changes in the ratio of specific heats and the gas constant due to combustion, then this is approximately M7 over M0 times the square root of T7 over T0. And TT7 over T7 is 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2M7 squared. So we can write TT7. this way. TT7 is TT0 times. I'm just going to do a chain through the entire engine of total temperature ratios. And 
Now we can simplify this. This is TT0 using our uh, component uh, stagnation temperature ratios. This is tau D, tau C, tau B, tau T, tau N. And because we know that a couple of those are 1, namely tau D and tau N, we can simplify this as this. T7 is T0, also substituting in the relationship between the static, static and stagnation temperatures in the free stream. And this is just tau C, tau B, tau T. So the TT7 is T naught theta naught, so that's the definition of theta naught. Tau C, tau B, tau T. Now we want to do a similar thing for the pressure. PT7 is P naught 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 m naught squared to the gamma over gamma minus 1 times pi d pi c pi b pi t and pi n. And again, pi d and pi n are 1, and this is the definition of delta naught. So we can write this as p naught delta naught tau c also pi b is 1 tau t and this is equal from the definition of pt7 for an isentropic process to p7 times 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 m7 squared to the gamma over gamma minus 1. But we already said that p0 equals p7 so we can cancel these out and we get that 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 m7 squared to the gamma over gamma minus 1 is equal to delta naught pi c pi t. Now if we put this into our equation for temperature, we get 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 m7 squared equals delta naught to the gamma minus 1 over gamma pi c to the gamma minus 1 over gamma tau t to the gamma minus 1 over gamma equals theta naught tau c tau t. So solving for the Mach number at station 7, we get the square root of 2 over gamma minus 1 times theta naught tau c tau t minus 1 to the 1 half. Now we're making some progress. So then, if we look at the relationship between T7 and T0, which we also need to get the velocity ratio, we can write this as T7 over T, T7, times T, T7 over T0. And this is theta0, tau c, tau b, tau t, over theta naught, tau c, tau t, so this is just tau b. So then c7 over c naught is just m7 over m naught, square root of t7 over t naught, which is 2 over gamma minus 1 square root, 
over m naught times theta naught tau c tau t minus one to the one half times the times the square root of tau b. So finally, putting it all together, we get c7 over c0 equals theta0 tau c tau t minus 1 times tau b over theta0 minus 1 all square root. Now, now that we finally have this velocity ratio, um, the power that's generated in the turbine, we need to remember, is the power needed to drive the compressor. Also, since theta 4, pp4 over t naught, we want to think about this because this is a useful parameter. Tt4 is the hottest temperature in the engine. Typically, this is a limiting quantity because of material um, and cooling strategy limits. So first law says m dot delta hg in the compressor equals m dot delta hg in the turbine because they're on the same shaft. All the power generated by the turbine goes to the compressor. And if we write this as m dot cp tt3 minus tt2 equals m dot cp tt4 minus tt5, we can cross out the m dots and the cps, and this is written just in terms of temperatures as tt3 over tt2 minus 1 times tt2 over t naught equals tt4 over t naught times 1 minus tt5 over tt4. And also, we have the tt2 over t naught is tau d theta naught, which is just theta naught since tau d is 1. So then we can write this as tau c, tt3 over tt2, minus 1, times theta naught, tt2 over t naught, equals theta t, 1 minus tau t. Where we're now going to use tau theta t as the same thing as theta 4, because it refers to the turbine inlet conditions. Okay, so if we rearrange this, we get that tau of the turbine is 1 minus theta naught over theta t and tau c minus 1. So this relates the temperature change across the turbine to that for the compressor. And now also we have that tau for the burner is theta t over theta naught tau c. And if we put everything into our expression for c7 over c naught and the thrust equation, uh, we get the following. We get F over M dot A naught is the mean free stream Mach number times theta naught over theta naught minus one times theta T over 
theta naught tau c minus 1 times tau c minus 1 plus theta t over theta naught tau c all to the power of one half minus one. And this is the specific thrust for a turbojet. An ideal turbojet. 